okay hello everyone in this beautiful morning during social distancing me Malik Mas Danang and Kanisa will present to you about Snyder's Omen nonverbal intelligence test please enjoy introduction okay next slide when we talk about the test we have to know who's the developer of the test right so She's the developer of the test, Nan Snyder's Omen. She's a ch- child psychologist who was born in Nightmare in December 20, 1916, and passed away at the age of 75 on October 18, 1992. Obviously, she's the developer of the test, the nonverbal S-O-N- SONR nonverbal intelligence test. She was very determined of a child's problems such as autism and death. She continued to work on that throughout her professional life. Oh, I almost forgot. At the same year of when she made the test, the SON test, which is at 1943, she obtained her doctoral degree on the dissertation of Intelligence Research of Deaf New Children, a new test scale. So as you can see, as her background is mostly filled by her passion on how to improve children's lives, particularly for them who are unlucky, I say. She became one of the per- she became one of the first in Netherlands to deal and understand with autism kids also. So the last, yeah, behind every successful successful woman, there's a great man inside, right? No, no, just kidding. So she, during her life, she continued her passion with the company of her husband Jan Snyders, whom it's he also contributed to some revisions of the sun test. Uh, and also, oh, she, he's a professor of Groningen in Groningen University, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, and they have like three children and one of them is also professor of statistics. So, continue to talk about the brief history about the test. SONR Nonverbal Intelligence Test was created in 1943 by the lady in prior slide, uh, Nan Snyder's Omen, the psychologist. So it can be administered using without using either written and spoken language. Why? Because initially its main purpose is to study about cognitive function of deaf children. But either way, the norms of the test uh, can be administered to the, those who can hear and those who are deaf. This test can also be used for autistic children, children with language problem, particularly in speech and hearing immigrant from other culture, and also mentally retarded kids and adults. So, this test was made based on Raymond B. Cattell's theory of intelligence. When Cattell questioned the structure of intelligence, uh, he simply derived an opinion that intelligence are components from several mental factors. So, according to him, intelligence is where someone can think abstractly, ability to learn, and adapt to their surroundings. Simultaneously, he also stated that regardless of the general knowledge, it happens that certain brain injuries might affect the fluid intelligence as well. So that's the motives of uh, creating the test, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So that's that. And oh, in the last, the last test, the last is that this test is initially only for children uh, at the age of 4 until 14. But now it can be administered from kids to adults around two and a half years until 40 years old because of several revisions throughout uh, the development that further will be explained by Kanisa. For the theoretical framework, there are no specific concept of intelligence that was assumed to be a basis for the test. But form, concrete coherence, abstraction, and short-term memory was seen as acceptable representation of intellectual functioning typical of subjects suffering from early deafness. So the test consists of six sub-tests, which are mosaics, categories, puzzles, analogies, situations, and patterns. So the subtest mosaics contains 15 items and there are two parts in this subtest. 
In the first part, the child is required to copy several simple mosaic patterns in a frame using three to five red squares. And in the second part, diverse mosaic patterns have to be copied in a frame using red, yellow, and red or yellow squares. So categories contains 15 items. Uh, there are two parts in this subtest as well. Uh, in the first part, four six cards have to be sorted into two groups according to the category to which they belong. Uh, in the second part, the second part is a multiple choice test. So in this part, the child is shown three pictures of objects that have something in common. Two more pictures that have the same thing in common have then to be chosen from another column of five pictures. The third subtest is puzzle or pause. The subtest consists of 14 items. The first part requires the children to assemble three part puzzle in a frame. The first few puzzles are demonstrated by the examiner until gradually the children do it themselves. For the second part, the puzzle consists of three to six separate puzzle pieces to form a picture, this time without a frame. There are no direction given for the second part and the number of puzzle pieces partially determine the level of difficulty. The fourth subtest is analogies or ANA. The subtest consists of 17 items. In the first test, children is tasked to differentiate blocks into two compartments depending either on their form, color, or size. As you can see from the picture, during the first few questions, it is easy to differentiate as it gradually becomes harder like differentiating sizes. The second test is a multiple choices test, where children is asked to choose geometrical shape similar to the example given that can be seen from the picture. The fifth subtest is situations, or sit, consists of 14 items. The first part is quite simple. Children is tasked to correctly place the missing half of the picture shown as we can see from the example. The second part is a multiple choice. In this part, each part consists of a drawing that is missing one or two pieces. The task is to choose the correct piece from the choices given. The last subtest is patterns, or pat, consists of 16 items. In this subtest, the first and the second part of the task is similar. What differs between the two parts of the task is the complexity. The subtest tasks children to copy the drawing examples shown using dots. In the first part, it consists no more than 5 dots, while in the second part, it consists of 5, 9, or 16 dots. So now I will talk about the latest developments, which will entail a discussion regarding the test variations and adaptations throughout the years, and also a study about fairness in cultural minorities, and lastly, its usage and applicability. For the test variations and adaptations, there are officially six versions of the SON. The first version was developed in 1943 by Schneider Zoman, and it was intended for the assessment of cognitive functioning in deaf children from 4 to 14 years of age. It was also intended to provide a clear indication of the child's learning ability and their chances of succeeding at school. And one of the requirements for this particular test battery was that upbringing and education should influence the test results as little as possible. The first revision of the test that was uh, made was published in 1958 and it was called the SON 58. It standardized the test for hearing as well as deaf children and it also expanded the test to children of 4 to 16 years of age. And then in the second revision, the test was uh, separated into two test batteries. And the most important reason for this was that in all the subtests of the original SON, a different type of test item had seemed to be more appropriate for children above six years of age. So the first test battery, the SON two and a half till seven, also called the preschool son, um, is made for three to seven years of age um, children. And the second test battery is the S son, 
and this is made for children who are 7 to 17 years of age and it is very similar to the son 58 except for the fact that the s on consists of multiple choice questions and then finally the third version and the most current version of the test is called son r two and a half to seven and son r five and a half till 17 and they were both developed in 1998 uh, replacing both s son and son 58 these two test batteries have a high degree of standardization in administration and scoring procedures. It has a high degree of reliability. And um, also, Sun, 5, Sun R5.5 to 7 is composed of abstract, concrete reasoning tests, spatial ability tests, a perceptual test, and also a memory test is included as well. There is a study done by Telgen and Laros in 2005 which looks at the fairness in the SON test for children from cultural minority groups. And from the table you can see that the test scores are a comparison of native Dutch children, immigrant children, and children of mixed parentage who took the SON test. Um, from the results we can see that the subtest scores were significant only at the 1% level and not the 5% level. So this means that this test can still be used with children of different cultures since the differences um, between the subtest scores weren't that significant. Um, furthermore, uh, in the table you can also see that the immigrant children have clearly have a lower score than uh, compared to the mixed and native Dutch children. But the cause of the lower performances in these immigrant children were not specifically due to the subtest itself because these subtests use meaningful picture materials and maybe they might have a cultural specific, specific meaning. Thus, there could be cultural bias in these tests, but this has not been further studied so far. For usage and applicability of the test, there are three studies. One of them is done by Gigi et al. in 2017. And this study proves that the SON test is a positive predictor of average school grades, uh, specifically predicts mathematics. And this was proven in a longitudinal study of three years. The second study is about uh, the Flint effect in mentally retarded adults and it was done by Nijman et al. in 2010. So in this particular study they used the SON test uh, meant for two and a half to seven years old. Um, so basically the Flint effect is a trend which shows that there is an increase in the IQ scores across generations. And this research was administered to 32 mentally retarded adults with a mental age of 3 to 6 years. And um, for the control group, it was um, the participants are children of the same chronological age. And it was found that the Flynn effect existed in retarded adults and that the effect was also larger compared to children with the same chronological age. Next, for the third study, um, this study discusses about how um, the SON test can be used for intelligence differentiation in the early years. So basically, the age differentiation hypothesis stated that cognitive abilities become more differentiated with increasing age during childhood. And the results show that there is a decrease in correlation between reasoning and performance factor with increasing age, but this decrease is significant only at a small magnitude, thus it is pro proven that it can be used to test out intelligence differentiation. I think that's all that our group can present. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day.